Good evening. Thanks for joining us for Source 16 News at 10. I'm Tammy Hancock. Well, it's been another snowy day that's created problems all across western Kentucky, including closing schools and causing treacherous driving conditions. Now, right now, we're going to take a look at the latest closings and cancellations. The following schools are closed tomorrow. Caldwell, Callaway, Christian, Graves, Hopkins, Lyon, Marshall, Muhlenberg, Todd, and Trigg counties, as well as Heritage Christian Academy, Mayfield City, Murray Independent Schools, and University Heights Academy. In addition, Christian County Head Start Park Day only and a Kids Place Daycare on North Main Street in Hopkinsville are also closed tomorrow. Other closings for Thursday, Dr. Gary Spencer's office. Christian County District Court is canceled Thursday, which is Traffic Court and Juvenile Court. And Christian County Circuit Court is also canceled Thursday. The Hopkinsville Community College Foundation meeting at 1130 tomorrow morning at the college has been canceled. And Christian County Health Department and Fort Campbell WIC are closed tomorrow. Meanwhile, hazardous road conditions kept emergency officials busy again today as they responded to numerous wrecks as well as some wrecks with injuries. This morning around 1130, emergency crews responded to the 14,000 block of Fort Campbell Boulevard in Thompsonville Lane in Oak Grove for a five-vehicle pileup where an infant was reportedly injured. Around 1155 near mile marker 91 of Interstate 24, a single vehicle wreck occurred. And around the same time, emergency crews responded to the 22 mile marker of the Pinaral Parkway where a vehicle had overturned and one possible injury was reported. In addition, a wreck was reported around 1240 near Waterwich off of East 9th Street where emergency officials reported a six year old was possibly injured. Meanwhile, Christian County Emergency Management Director Randy Graham is strongly discouraging residents from traveling on area roads as conditions continue to deteriorate and roads become treacherous overnight. As temperatures continue to fall this evening, Graham says salt will become less effective and roads will rapidly deteriorate. According to Graham, if you have to travel, residents are reminded to, dr to drive carefully, take your time, and stay home unless you absolutely need to travel. Meanwhile, Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Highway crews today plowed and treated roadways throughout the Jackson Purchase and much of the Pinaral region of western Kentucky as the new winter storm moved eastward. State and local officials urged motorists to restrict travel in western Kentucky because of hazardous driving conditions, especially in Caldwell and Christian counties. Snowfall amounts exceeded forecast and plunging temperatures limited the effectiveness of salt treatments. Statewide, Transportation Cabinet maintenance crews have a fleet of 1,065 snow plows and can call on more than 350 snow removal contractors. And if emergency personnel were not already busy enough today responding to weather-related wrecks, Hopkinsville firefighters were called out to an apartment fire late this afternoon. According to unconfirmed emergency reports, firefighters responded to 31 Pinaral apartments around 410 when a resident called 911 to report that she thought her neighbor's apartment was on fire because smoke was coming through the wall. No details have been released, but firefighters extinguished the fire quickly after arriving on the scene. In other news, Kentucky State Police just released their 2010 methamphetamine lab statistics and, according to the data, meth labs occurrences were at an all-time high in the Commonwealth. KSP reports over 1,000 meth labs were found last year, exceeding all previous year totals. The statistics indicate the top five counties with the highest number of meth labs were Jefferson County with 154, Laurel County with 113, Warren County had 70 labs, Barron County 57, and finally Hardin County reported 53 labs. Earlier this week, state police arrested four people after discovering a meth lab at a Leslie County residence where three children were found and treated for chemical burns at Hazard ARH Regional Medical Center. Breaking up meth labs cost law enforcement $2.9 million last year, which included investigative costs, waste removal cleanup, supplies, lab analysis, and transportation of waste from the scene. Meanwhile, a burglary in progress call at a home in Christian County landed three Tennessee men behind bars on manufacturing meth charges. According to a Christian County Sheriff's report, 28-year-old Kyle Tudor of Indian Mound, 25-year-old Timothy Case, and 28-year-old Jeffrey Edwards, both of Clarksville, were arrested and charged with manufacturing meth and possession of meth and marijuana. 
Shortly after midnight, the property owner of 3845 Memory Lane called police and stated when she arrived at the vacant home, she found a window broken out, screens cut out, and three white males leaving the residence. When police arrived at the home, they found three white males sitting inside a vehicle in the driveway and a fourth white male outside the vehicle. The homeowner told police Tudor is her daughter's ex-boyfriend and they have a child in common. She stated that she had allowed him to stay in the house for a couple of nights in January, but then told him to leave and change the locks. The report says the men possessed items used to manufacture meth as well as white powder that tested positive for meth. And then they also have baggies, jars, and pill bottles containing marijuana. In addition, Tudor was charged with second-degree burglary. And another meth arrest occurred in Hopkins County last night after a 39-year-old Nortonville man allegedly fled from police trying to initiate a traffic stop. Rodney Abbott of Nortonville White Plains Road was arrested by the Hopkins County Sheriff's Department around 640 and also charged with reckless driving, fleeing, evading police, wanton endangerment of a police officer, and possession of a controlled substance. According to the report, a deputy witnessed Abbott weaving across the center line in his vehicle and trying to stop him at the intersection of Stagecoach and Antioch Church Road. However, police say Abbott fled and then lost control of his vehicle and ran off the road into a ditch on John Thomas Road. Police say Abbott kept spinning tires trying to flee, but the deputy disabled both front tires, then opened the passenger door and tased him. He was taken into custody and booked into the Hopkins County Jail on a $50,000 bond. Two Mayfield residents were arrested this morning for allegedly stealing items from a vehicle parked at a towing business. 25-year-old Amber Crockett and 22-year-old Justin Williams, who both list the Budget Inn in Mayfield as their address, were charged with theft by unlawful taking from an auto. Around 4.50 this morning, Mayfield police reportedly saw Crockett and Williams walking west on East Broadway at Jenkins Street carrying a large bag. However, after police turned around to watch the couple, officers noticed they no longer had the bag. When officers stopped the duo and investigated further, they found the bag contained several items, including an AM FM CD player, radar detector, Kenwood remote, cell phone, and some other items that had been stolen from a vehicle parked at affordable towing. Mayfield police are investigating an identity theft where someone reportedly used an Usher Street man's credit card to make over a dozen purchases. 39-year-old Vernon Hamby of Usher Street reported to police that he noticed on his bank statement that someone had used his credit card information to make 13 different charges with 13 different companies totaling around $2,000. He stated that his credit card is, stays in his wallet and no one has access to it. An early morning Murray police traffic stop uncovered several stolen items and drug paraphernalia. Spokeswoman Tracy Googe says 18-year-old Catherine Oliver, Jordan Porix, and Gary Rowland and a 16-year-old juvenile were in a vehicle pulled over by police. According to reports, Herndon observed items reportedly stolen earlier Monday evening by both city and county residents. Oliver and Porix have been charged with possessing drug paraphernalia. Good says more charges are pending as the investigation continues. Military officials say a Fort Campbell soldier and his canine partner named Toki are a living testament that dogs are truly a man's best friend, especially in Afghanistan. Here is Specialist Adam Ross with more. This is Toki, an Army working dog, and you never need to look far to find his handler, Private Stefan Villarreal. Today, Toki is receiving dental care to keep him in peak operating condition, and Private Villarreal is right at his side. Uh, he's doing good. He is not aggressed on any dogs, and he doesn't aggress on humans, and he's a really good dog, he's an amazing dog. When he was at infantry school, Private Villarreal didn't expect to have a dog as his partner when conducting dismounted patrols but that changed shortly after his arrival at Fort Campbell. Then uh, Major Parker came from 2nd Brigade and asked if we would like to uh, help out and come be dog handlers and uh, of course jumped on it because it seemed like it'd be a very fun job. Come on, we got this. Both are making the transition to become a successful canine team, sniffing out items such as bombs, drugs, or weapons, with Villarreal using his Please. infantry training whenever possible. Uh, well, pretty much the endurance running and stuff like that pretty much and then besides that <laughs> it's a whole different story it's nothing like it together as a team Villarreal and Toki will work with the troops of Task Force Strike to secure Zari province specialist Adam Ross Kandahar Airfield Afghanistan 
And the Fort Campbell Private is assigned to Fort Campbell 2nd Brigade Headquarters and Headquarters Company. We have several recalls you should know about tonight. Escalade Sports is recalling over 4,500 Oasis outdoor play sets. Escalade Sports has received numerous reports of the swing set seats breaking in half and causing the user to fall to the ground. These play sets were sold nationwide between April 2008 and December of last year. Consumers are urged to immediately stop using the swing set seats and to contact Escalade Sports at 800-742-6009 for free replacement seats. Lasco Products is recalling over 100,000 of their portable electric heaters. There's been reports of an electrical connection in the base of the unit overheating, causing it to melt and exposing the electrical connection, making it a fire hazard. The Lasco model 5,540 was sold at Sounds Club between September 2002 and through early 2004. Consumers with the recalled heaters are urged to call Lasco at 800-363-8044. And last, Tech 4 Kids is recalling over 2,000 of their outer edge snow bikes. Tech 4 Kids has received reports of the front ski cracking and breaking, causing the snow bike to stop suddenly and consumers fall. Injuries have included a cut that required stitches and a dislocated shoulder. The snow bikes were sold at Costco and sports goods stores nationwide and online at Amazon.com and Walmart.com between December 2010 and January of this year. Consumers can return the recalled snow bikes to the store they were purchased from for a full refund. Now here is Hopkinsville Christian County Crime Stoppers coordinator Paul Ray with the Featured Fugitives of the Week. This week Hopkinsville police need your help locating two wanted fugitives. Police are looking for 29-year-old Nicholas Thomas Simpson who's wanted for probation violation. Simpson is a white male who stands 6 feet tall and weighs 210 pounds. His last known address was the 700 block of East 7th Street. Police are also looking for 35-year-old Jason Lee Quinn, who's wanted for failure to appear on felony charges. Quinn is a white male who stands 6 feet, 2 inches tall, and weighs 170 pounds. His last known address was the 1000 block of Pool Mill Road. If you know where police can locate these wanted fugitives, and we've got cash waiting for you. Pick up your phone now and call our tips line at 887-TIPS. If your information leads to an arrest, Crime Stoppers will pay you a cash reward. And remember, we will never ask your name, and you will not have to appear in court. Well, this week's Fugitive of the Week, I'm Officer Paul Ray for Crime Stoppers. Tonight's Powerball jackpot is $63 million, and Friday's Mega Millions jackpot is $30 million.